Happy Thursday, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos. After rain and snow yesterday, conditions should be drier today. However, an active pattern will bring multiple storms to our region in the coming days. I'll give you a look at those storms coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an Idaho influencer in court today. The decision she may make after being accused of a hit and run. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, more Idahoans losing thousands of dollars to scammers. What to look out for that could save your life savings. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza this morning. It is Thursday, January 4th, 2024. Vasily Varlamos will have your weather coming up in just a minute. But first, new this morning, Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief saying Wednesday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in attacks, no matter where they are. It comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in an airstrike or a strike rather earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Ukraine has been under coming under heavy missile strikes from Russia for days now. And while it managed to shoot down most of those missiles on Tuesday, five people were killed and 130 injured with a residential building destroyed in the capital. A stark reminder that while the eyes of the world are on the Middle East, Ukrainians continue to live under attack. The head of the armed forces says they need resources, saying it would cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of the world safe. And there are still dozens of people missing after a series of earthquakes in Japan. Japanese officials increasing the number of reported missing people from just 15 to 79. The death toll stood at 84 as of Thursday. Hundreds of others, or pardon me, as of Wednesday, hundreds of others have been injured. Japan's western coastline was initially hit with a 7.6 magnitude earthquake back on Monday. There have been dozens of aftershocks since then. More documents related to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are expected to be released gradually over the next few days. The documents do not contain a list of Epstein's clients. Pages released yesterday mention former presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, but do not accuse them of any wrongdoing. While Epstein's legal woes played out publicly, court documents redacted the names of some of his accusers and associates. Ultimately, nearly 200 people could be named. Some names were already revealed when Epstein's partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, was convicted of sex trafficking back in 2021. It's unknown what all the documents contain. Well, back here at home, a local social media influencer could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodgson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter. She's accused of hitting and killing a woman back in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she'll be in court today and we'll let you know what happens. Hodgson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers online with workout guides and more geared towards moms. Well, we told you yesterday about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it all the way to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zerkatis from Napa stole that single engine plane, damaging others other planes, that is, while trying to break into them just days before. California police meeting him at that unauthorized landing. He faces charges in California and soon Nevada, and now he has a warrant in Ada County for violating parole by doing this. The sentence is for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom. A man attacking Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Oh, 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 hey. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holthus was in the middle of sentencing Deborah Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holthus. Several other people when then fight with Redden before throwing him to the ground. According to court records, the attack happened moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and a marshal was hospitalized after that attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. And San Antonio police say they've arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. 19 year old Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Gara. 53 year old Ramon Preciado is charged with abuse of a corpse accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there could be more charges connected to the unborn baby. 
Well, in a few weeks, Americans in Iowa will start voting for a Republican presidential candidate. But around that time, one of the candidates will also be on trial. Donald Trump's attorneys heading to court January 16th after a federal appeals court denied former President Trump's request to delay E. Jean Carroll's defamation trial. In Carroll's first lawsuit, Trump was found liable in May of sexually abusing and defaming the writer. He was ordered to pay $5 million in damages to her. Now, in his second trial, or lawsuit rather, a federal judge ruled in September that Trump was liable for defaming Carroll when he denied her rape accusations back in 2019. And Trump asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review a ruling barring him from the Colorado primary ballot. Now, this is over his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. The decision from the Colorado Supreme Court last month citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which states officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Now, just on Tuesday, Trump appealed a similar decision from Maine Secretary of State. Meantime, a legal win for the former president, a federal judge dismissing most of the civil charges filed against Donald Trump over the death of a United States Capitol Police officer, Brian Sicknick, who died following the January 6 Capitol riots. Now, it includes the wrongful death claim brought by Sicknick's longtime partner, Sandra Garza. She's suing Trump and two convicted rioters for $10 million in damages. But because she wasn't Sicknick's spouse or official domestic partner, the judge only allowing her case to move forward on the remaining two claims, which accused Trump and the rioters of joining a conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. And President Biden marking the third anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol with a speech in Pennsylvania near the historic Revolutionary War site, Valley Forge. The president expected to lay out the stakes as he sees them of the 2024 election. Now, according to the Biden campaign, the president will make the case that democracy and freedom, quote, remain central to the fight we're in today. Now, Trump is also expected to hold two campaign events on the same day. And the former president also set to hold a campaign event next week. He'll be at Fox News, a town hall. He's doing that instead of attending the next GOP primary debate. Trump avoiding all of those debates so far. It has the other GOP candidates frustrated. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calling out Donald Trump during his own campaign event in Iowa yesterday. I accepted it, Haley accepted. And so then yesterday he just announced he's going to do a town hall on Fox News the same time we're doing the debate. So if he's able to come to Iowa to do a town hall, why not just go over um, and do the debate? He's basically uh, making a mockery of this whole process by not showing up and answering people's questions. He doesn't think he needs to. Um, and look, ultimately, Iowans can determine uh, how they want, uh, who they want to nominate. Still, Trump maintains his big lead in the GOP polls. Well, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its 10 chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain snowmaking technology. That machine made snow making snow is so successful. Bogus Basin was able to shatter a previous snowmaking record this year, running snowmakers for 48 hours and converting 5 million gallons of local mountain water into snow. So you see in the background is mostly machine made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. Now the water is pulled from the mountains, natural snowmelt and waterways, ensuring no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a break soon as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. Vasili will let us know if their wishes might come true coming up in just a bit. And at Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express high speed quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a 32 year old one installed back in 1990. It cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Well, after some rain and snow yesterday, we are going to see some drier conditions around the Treasure Valley today. Look for partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. We'll likely see some mostly cloudy skies throughout the morning, but we'll start to see a few sun breaks as we head into the afternoon. Wind speeds will start to pick up this afternoon. We'll see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour around 2 and 3 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 41 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. today, but we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific that'll bring multiple storms into our region over the 
next couple of days. The first of those expected to arrive in the early hours of Friday morning. We're likely going to see some rain and snow here in the valley. We're looking at about an inch and a half of snow here in Boise, and we'll likely see some snow showers on Saturday too. And then we're going to see an unsettled pattern continue through Wednesday and next week. Now here's a look at those snow estimates. We're looking at about an inch in or 1.7 inches of snow here in Boise, and they'll see about 1.1 inches of snow through Friday morning. Now after that, we'll likely see some precipitation once again on Saturday and take a look at this unsettled pattern as we head through next week. We have a good chance of seeing some widespread showers on Monday and possibly on Tuesday too, and those showers could continue into Wednesday and next week, and that's great news for our snow packs. Take a look at these right now. We're sitting with about 51% normal over at the Payette Basin and about 57% normal over at the Boise Basin. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains, 28 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage, and 17 inches at the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise, Nampa, Caldwell, and over in Ontario. 42, looking like the high in Emmett and over in Mountain Home. Then moving up to the mountains, 38, going to be the high in Idaho City. 35, looking like the high in Sun Valley. And 30, going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, several border crossings set to reopen today. The arguments about what to do about the border crisis. Plus, trying to decide on a budget. The process members on Capitol Hill, or the progress members on Capitol Hill say they're now making. Hey, and it's time for our question of the day. Let's first take a look back at yesterday's question. About 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. The answer, yeah, it's a surprising one. It's their toilet. Yeah, all right. Now for today's question. In 1990, about 5% of Americans had one. Now, close to 50% have one. Ooh. All right, folks, what is it? Is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 514 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Four crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border set to reopen today. They were partially or fully closed as of last month. Officials saying they didn't have the resources to process a record surge of asylum seekers. And that move comes after House Speaker Mike Johnson led a Republican congressional delegation to Eagle Pass, Texas yesterday. Amanda Henderson spent the day learning what they say it'll take to have bipartisan discussions about our southern border. Arriving in droves, more than 60 House Republicans stepping foot at the southern border with a message for the White House. The situation here and across the country is truly unconscionable. House Speaker Mike Johnson with fiery words for the Biden administration on how they've responded to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's attempts to block migrants from crossing. And how has this administration responded? They have sued the state of Texas to stop their deterrence efforts. They have brought them to court. The congressional delegation's visit to Eagle Pass comes one day after top White House officials pointed the finger at House Republicans for border issues. Texas Democratic Congresswoman Veronica Escobar calling today's press conference performative politics. Texas Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro saying congressional Democrats and President Biden are ready to sit down and negotiate. There have been a record number of migrants entering the southern border. Last month, more than 300,000 people crossed. Not even 100 feet from where the press conference took place, we saw a family cross the Rio Grande. And right now, there are more migrants crossing the Rio Grande. You see this man right here trying to get onto U.S. soil. It's something that the members of Congress who are here today say they need to come to the table to talk about. So we asked the congressional delegation the same question. What will it take to get everyone involved in a bipartisan discussion about the border? So showing up matters. Until that happens, all that's going to, uh, this, this crisis is going to continue. We're already starting to see bipartisan concern about this issue. The conversation has started. The key is we're dealing with administration does not care. The, the reason negotiations normally win because there's, there's a place to find call it win-win. When both parties say we're going to win, we might have to give up a little bit. Unless we have a willingness from this administration, we're going to continue to see that. Congressman Henry Guayar says bipartisan support is critical, speaking with us hours ahead of his own press conference about the border in Laredo. I hope the Republicans don't just sit the narratives and go back. In order to do something real, it's got to be bipartisan. I mean, I think the, uh, the American public knows exactly what's happening here. We can't talk about political narratives. We've got to talk about real solutions. Reporting in Eagle Pass, I'm Amanda Henderson. 
Well, Democrats appear to agree that the problem at the southern border needs to be addressed, but agreeing on that problem doesn't mean agreeing on a solution. Democrats don't agree with Republican solution to codify some Trump era border policies, like keeping migrants in Mexico during the asylum seeking process. Instead, the White House says it wants more funding for Border Patrol agents and immigration judges. Many lawmakers pushing for a compromise. Our goal has been to find a practical solution to the crisis. Senate negotiators working on bipartisan changes to those asylum laws and parole policies. They're also considering more power for expulsion and border shutdowns. Well, meantime, the White House defending the Homeland Secretary of Security, expressing full confidence in how he's handling the border crisis. We believe that um, what they're doing, the House Republicans are doing uh, with this imp impeachment inquiry is baseless. Uh, we believe that uh, it's a political stunt and, and we believe there's not there's no time for that right now. This is House Republicans plan to hold an impeachment hearing for Mayorkas as of next week. It's related to his handling of the border crisis. Republicans slamming President Biden over his border policies amid a surge in those illegal crossings. Now, if the House impeaches Mayorkas, the Democratic Senate likely will not convict him. Meantime, the Senate says they're making progress on a budget. Talks continue as the national debt spiked to an all-time high of $34 trillion. As for the budget negotiations, we've made real good, good progress in that regard, and we're getting quite close. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can get a budget agreement soon, and I'm hopeful that we could avoid a shutdown. Back in June, House Republicans agreed to a temporary extension of the debt limit, but with the debt hitting new highs, that could further complicate talks on the Hill. All right, we'll take a look at this. A Colorado firefighter is being called a hero for saving a dog's life, and it was all caught on camera. The ice rescue happened after the dog fell in a frozen pond. Community members at the park quickly calling 911. In the video, you can see the firefighter tied to a lifeline diving into the ice to save the dog. Once he got a hold of the canine, both were pulled back to safety. The dog seems to be okay after getting all warmed up. Oh, oh what an amazing video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, thankful they were there and were yeah, quick acting. That made definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. No, a nice heartwarming story to start your morning. Hopefully yeah. he's a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. And if you're heading out the door this morning, I hope you're warm. It's chilly. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. quite chilly out there. Temperatures <laughs> sitting right below freezing for much of the Treasure Valley this morning. And that front that did impact us yesterday is now over the Rockies, but we do have a very active pattern out in the Pacific that will bring multiple storms into our region over the next couple of days. The first of those storms currently impacting western Washington right now, and this is set to drop down to the Treasure Valley and likely impact us early on on Friday morning. Let's take a look at future cast because today we are going to see some dry conditions. Look for partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies today. And then as we head into Friday morning, we are going to see this front impacting our region first with some rain. And then we are going to see some snow showers here in the valley till about 430 or 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then after that, we should see those conditions start to dry out. We'll likely see some partly cloudy skies in the morning, followed by some mostly clear skies for the rest of the day on Friday. And then we'll see another front roll in on Saturday that will likely bring us some more snow showers. Now temperatures are going to drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday. We'll keep on dropping down into the mid 30s on Sunday and we'll drop all the way down right around freezing on Monday. Now we are looking at partly cloudy skies on Sunday, but again, this weather pattern is quite unsettled. We're looking at snow showers on Monday and possibly some snow showers on Wednesday. We'll see a winter mix of rain and snow on Tuesday as those high temperatures jump up into the upper 30s. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll likely see some snow showers early on on Friday morning, followed by some partly cloudy skies. Guys, high temperature is going to be right around freezing both today and tomorrow for dropping down to the upper 20s on Saturday and they'll drop down to the mid 20s on Sunday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly four degrees. They'll likely see some snow showers from Saturday all the way through Wednesday over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, rate hikes set to start going back down eventually when we can expect to see lower interest rates. Plus, some Americans may have trouble saving. Why people making $100,000 a year say they're still living paycheck to paycheck. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 523 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The Federal Reserve moving cautiously on rate cuts this year. That's according to the minutes of the Fed officials most recent meeting last month. Well, a pivot will likely happen. They say keeping rates elevated is necessary until inflation is clearly moving toward their 2% target. 
Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinting at this point just last month. The inflation data received so far for October and November show a welcome reduction in the monthly pace of price increases. But it will take substantially more evidence to give confidence that inflation is on a sustained downward path. The stock market jumping after those comments, with traders penciling in multiple rate cuts in for this year, giving investors hope the economy may have ridden out the storm. The inflation rate stands at to 3.2 percent and falling. Well, hey, more than 60 percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, but for some, lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep, it can be a big factor. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains the costly phenomenon. What do you guys think the most expensive resort in Morocco? Netflix's Inventing Anna told the story of a fraudster posing as a wealthy heiress. She stole money to fund her lavish lifestyle. She has everything that is wrong with America right now. Most Americans aren't that bad, but many do suffer from lifestyle creep, also known as lifestyle inflation. It's when your spending goes up as a result of your income going up. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we make more money, we think that we should spend more money too. So you can get an idea of just how widespread this problem is. Almost half of Americans who make more than $100,000 per year are living paycheck to paycheck. What she began to teach me was, hey, you, you know, you're driving your opportunities down the highway. LaShawn Holland, a wealthy lifestyle coach, says she struggled with lifestyle creep, too. She used to buy a new car every few years until a mentor helped her realize she was losing hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing so. No one has ever taught us, for the most part, how not to live off 100 percent of your income. Right. And so we earn it. We spend it. We earn it. We spend it without any consideration of investing it. She says the best way to avoid lifestyle creep is to ask yourself what's important and to pause before purchasing. Does it really bring meaning to my life? Does it really add value to my life? She also suggests having a plan for spending, saving, and investing. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. The FTC getting 2.4 million reports of fraud just last year. Federal and local law enforcement warning of even more this year. Many Idahoans lose their life savings and retirements to scammers. And officials say these criminals are targeting anyone with a computer. It could be asking you to provide you know, your personal information. What's your address? You know, what's your even your social security number, which is something obviously you would really need to provide. So to identify when you may be getting scammed, the first red flag to watch out for is if the scammer is trying to play on your emotions. It could be an email telling you that your account's been hacked, so you need to click this link fast. Some other red flags may be look for misspellings in the message or in the domain of the website. If you do become a victim of a scam, please contact law enforcement right away. The sooner you report the scam, the higher the chances that you can get your money back. Coming up on CBS2 News, Israel targeting Hamas leaders. We have more coming up. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Is CBS2 News this morning? It's 5.30 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A local social media influencer could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodgson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter. She's accused of hitting and killing a woman back in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she'll be in court today and we'll let you know what happens. Hodgson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers with online workout guides and more geared towards local moms. And we told you yesterday about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it over to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zerkatis is from Nampa. He stole the single engine plane and damaged other planes, trying to break into them in the days before. California police meeting him at that unauthorized landing in California. He now faces charges in California and soon Nevada. And now he has a warrant in Ada County for violence violating parole by doing so. That sentence is for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom. A man attacking a Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Oh, 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 hey. Oh, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. 
Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holthus was in the middle of sentencing Deobra Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holthus. Several other people then fight with Redden before throwing him to the ground. According to court records, the attack happened moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and a marshal was hospitalized after that attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. And San Antonio police say they've now arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. 19 year old Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Gara. 53 year old Ramon Preciado charged with abuse of a corpse accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappearing at just a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there now could be more charges connected to that unknown un unborn baby. Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief said yesterday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in attacks no matter where they are. This comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in a strike earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Back here in the U.S., the White House says Hamas still has a significant force posture inside Gaza. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby says U.S. has estimates on how many members of Hamas are left, but declined to provide any of those numbers. I think I'm going to let Israel characterize how they've been doing, but they have, without question, let me just say this broadly, they have had an effect uh, on uh, Hamas's ability to command and control itself, to resource itself, and quite frankly, to lead their troops. Israel vows to wipe out Hamas following the militant group's deadly October 7th attacks. Kirby was pressed on this goal yesterday. He says, though, it may not be possible to eliminate an ideology. The threat that Hamas poses to the Israeli people can be eliminated. The White House says the U.S. has not given up hope and continues to work to free the hostages that are being held by Hamas. What I can tell you uh, is that the conversations are ongoing. They're real. Um, and we are pursuing them with the same sense of energy that we were, you know, a month or two ago when we were able to get um, uh, some 50 hostages out. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said he does not have any specific progress to report as of yesterday. He notes U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke with Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs yesterday to discuss military operations and efforts to secure the release of the remaining hostages. An estimated 240 people were initially taken hostage during Hamas's deadly October 7th attacks. The State Department believes six Americans remain unaccounted for. Well, a senior official in the U.S. Department of or U.S. Education Department says he left his job because of how the Biden administration is handling the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. Now, Education Policy Advisor Tark Habash is a Palestinian American. He notes the overseas conflict impacting Jewish, Muslim, and Arabs here in the U.S., arguing students don't feel safe on college campuses. Habash saying President Biden has the power to end this violence, which he says a lot of Democratic voters support. And the refusal by the president to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire is untenable with um, the um, the belief by millions of Americans across this country. His resignation comes after State Department official Josh Paul stepped down from his role back in October, saying he disagreed with America's lethal assistance to Israel. And we still don't know who was behind Wednesday's bombing at a ceremony honoring slain Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Now, Iranian officials say at least 84 people were killed when two bombs exploded near Soleimani's grave back on Wednesday. Iran's government vowing to punish those responsible for those blasts. No group has claimed responsibility yet. Soleimani was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Iraq back in January of 2020. And American and South Korean troops holding military drills near North Korea's border. South Korea's military saying it concluded joint combat firing drills near the North Korean border on Thursday. The drills starting just a week ago. South Korea's army saying those drills are a way to test and enhance their combat readiness. It comes after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un threatened earlier this week to thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. Well, Ukraine asking Western allies to expedite decision when it comes to giving aid. A leader of Ukraine's army 
saying the military shot down a record number of Russian missiles earlier this week. And for Ukraine to fight back, the country's foreign minister saying weapons and other resources are essential. It's an investment in the protection of NATO and in the protection of uh, also the prosperity of the American people. Because if Russia theoretically prevails in Ukraine, other leaders across the world will be tempted to follow Russia's footprints. The foreign minister says it could cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of our world safe. Well, the European Union imposing sanctions against Russia's Al Rosa. That's the world's largest diamond mining company. It's in response to the ongoing war in Ukraine. Under these sanctions, the CEO of the mine will be banned from traveling to Europe and any assets held in the EU are being frozen. The designation part of a G7 ban on imports for Russian diamonds, which does include an exemption for Russian diamonds processed in other countries. But that exception expected to be phased out by September. The company has already been subject to similar sanctions in the U.S. since 2022. Back here at home, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its 10 chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain's snow making technology. That machine making snow is so successful, Bogus Basin shattering a previous snow making record this year, running snow makers for 48 hours and converting 5 million gallons of local mountain water into snow. So you see in the background is mostly machine made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. The water is pulled from the mountain's natural snowmelt and waterways, ensuring that no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a break soon as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. Vasily will let us know if their wishes are coming true coming up in just a minute. And at Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express high speed quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a 32 year old one that was installed back in 1990. It cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to just six minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And good news for skiers, the mountains are likely going to get a pretty good dose of snow over the next couple of days. Now here in the Treasure Valley, we may see some snow later on, on or early on on Friday morning. As for today, we are looking at dry conditions. We'll likely see some mostly cloudy skies throughout the morning, but we may see a few sun breaks this afternoon. Now wind speeds will reach up to 7 miles an hour this afternoon. And then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 41 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. today. Now we do have a very active pattern out in the Pacific that'll bring us multiple storms over the next couple of days. The first of those expected to arrive in the early hours of Friday morning. We'll likely see some snow showers here in the valley early on on Friday, and then we'll likely see the return of some snow showers on Saturday, and that's kicking off an unsettled pattern that'll stick around through Wednesday and next week. Now, here's a look at the snow estimates. We're looking at about 1.7 inches of snow here in Boise. We're looking at about 1.1 inches of snow over in McCall through Friday morning. Now, after that, we're likely going to see some snow showers here in the valley once again on Saturday. Saturday. Take a look at this unsettled pattern from Monday through Wednesday and next week. We'll likely see some widespread showers on Monday night and into Tuesday, and these showers will likely continue through Wednesday. Now, great news for our mountains. Here's a look at those snowpack levels. Much of these sitting around 50% of normal. The Boise Basin sitting about uh, sitting at about 57% of normal for this time of year. Now, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 28 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise, Nampa, Caldwell, and over in Ontario, 42, looking like the high over in Emmett and Mountain Home. Then moving up to the mountains, 38, going to be the high over in Idaho City, 35, looking like the high in Sun Valley, and 30, going to be the high in McCall. Take a look at the temperature drop we're going to see over the weekend. High temperatures will drop down right around our average of 38 degrees on Saturday, but then we'll dip below average on Sunday and Monday. We're looking at a high of 34 degrees on Sunday, and 33, going to be the high on Monday, but temperatures will start to trend upwards as we head into Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Vasily. It's 540 on your Thursday. It's time for our question of the day. Here it is. In 1990, 5% of Americans had one. Now, close to 50% have one. Ooh, this is a tough. I feel like there's a lot of different options for this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a laptop. Oh, okay, oh, I like that. I like I, that one. Same kind of thread. I'm doing a desktop computer. Okay, cool. Like uh -huh. that, like that. What do you okay. think, Ashley? 
a TV in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, cool. Yep, like that's too. a good one. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say. All right, Karen says a computer and the home. Yeah, basically mm -hmm. going along Just in with general. Our yeah, yep, I like yep. that one. I like it. All right, let's see what else we have. Steve says a cell phone. That was another oh. one I was thinking too. That's a great guess, Steve. Mm -hmm. Quite an uptick since 1990, no doubt. Yeah. All right, let's see what else. Anita, oh, a Ooh. garage door opener. That's oh. new technology. I like uh, it. Okay. The simple pleasures, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Well, folks, if you think you know the answer, we still have quite a bit of time for you to get your guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or Twitter, guessing on that question of the day post. We'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer that comes at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, staying healthy means eating healthy this flu season. The top foods that really prove you are what you eat. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 544 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration evaluating reports of side effects in people taking medications like Ozempic. They could include hair loss and suicidal thoughts. People who take diabetic medications may also be at risk, but this is just means that the FDA has concluded that the drug has the listed risk and not necessarily identifying it as a potential safety issue. Now on its website, the agency reporting that it's evaluating the need for regulatory action after it received reports of unusual side effects. These popular drugs designed to treat diabetes for weight loss or weight loss rather mimic GLP-1, a hormone naturally produced in the body. And more U.S. hospitals requiring masks and limiting visitors as health officials face an unexpected, but well expected, but still nasty post-holiday spike in flu, coronavirus and other illnesses. Experts say they're doing better now than they were last year when it comes to respiratory illness. But it's unclear when we'll hit our peak for COVID, the flu and RSV. It's busy here, you know, we're seeing um, lots of upper respiratory infections come in. The CDC says one contributing factor to the rise in illnesses is people haven't kept up with vaccinations. Fewer than 50% of adults are vaccinated for the flu, even fewer for COVID. As cold and flu viruses keep spreading, you might want to change what's on your menu. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares the top immune boosting foods to help your body fight off getting sick. Hey there, everybody. While no single food can fight off the flu, Mayo Clinic researchers say certain nutrients in foods do appear to play a role in your immune health. They are best as part of an overall healthy diet, says health coach Lindsay Bonadonna knows. In my own personal health journey is I discovered the more that I could nourish myself with whole foods and the less processed foods that I ate, I started to feel better. I started to see my life more clearly. You see, whole foods are packed with naturally occurring nutrients, the very nutrients needed to fight off <coughs> some of the bugs seriously spreading right now. Those nutrients include beta carotene. It's found in sweet potatoes, carrots, and mangoes. Vitamin C, found in citrus fruits and berries. Vitamin D, found in fatty fish such as salmon, milk, and eggs. Zinc in lean beef, beans, and nuts. Probiotics or good bacteria found in something like these yogurt bowls Lindsay loves. We've done all the work to make sure there's no weird ingredients. And protein such as chicken, seeds, and beans and lentils. Now, if you're wishing you could just pop a few pills to give you these nutrients, quick reminder, the food itself has additional benefits. Phytonutrients are found in the colors, flavors, and textures of foods, and they're not found in most supplements. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Americans cutting back on beer. One report showing beer shipments on track to fall below 200 million barrels for the first time since 1999. And that Bud Light maker Anheuser-Busch was among the worst to hit, worst hit due to a boycott. But the drop is part of a larger trend as the beer industry competes with new alcohol products and Americans drinking less overall. Well, today is a great day to fix yourself a bowl of pasta. Today is National Spaghetti Day. Pasta is often made from semolina flour and is placed on millions of dinner tables annually. Aside from the classic tomato sauce, other popular spaghetti toppings include garlic and oil, carbonara and bolognese. Although the exact origin of spaghetti is in debate, string-like food from semolina is mentioned in a 9th century Arab dictionary.
Well, another mm. day goes on, and another day where I want dinner at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the I morning. I know, they keep yeah. showing us these, right? I know. Yeah, we had National Buffet Day two days ago, and this morning it's National Spaghetti Day. Definitely going to get some later. Oh, you yeah. know what sounds even better, though? What? A buffet of spaghetti. Of spaghetti different kinds of spaghetti. Ooh, I like that idea. Uh, I we like get on board with that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Let's switch right. gears over to weather. It's quite chilly out there this morning. We are going to see some drier conditions today. After we saw a wet evening here in the Treasure Valley yesterday, now we are seeing that front that impacted us yesterday moving over the Rockies now, but we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific that is going to bring us multiple storms over the next couple of days. The first of those storms is currently impacting western Washington right now, and this is set to move down into our region and impact us early on on Friday and we'll likely see another storm follow that on Saturday. Now let's take a look at Futurecast because we are going to see some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies today as we head into the evening is where we'll start to see a few showers pop up and then we'll likely see a mixture of rain and snow move through the region till about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now we are going to see some snow accumulating here in the Treasure Valley early on, on Friday morning with those temperatures dropping below freezing. But as we hit throughout the day on Friday, we should see those conditions dry out and we'll likely see some clear skies as we head into Friday afternoon. But then on Saturday, we'll start to see some increasing clouds ahead of a front that will likely impact us later on Friday. Over the next six to ten days, temperatures are going to dip well below our average here in the Treasure Valley. We'll likely see those high temperatures dropping down right around freezing. Now here's a look at the extended forecast. Temperatures likely going to remain above average both today and tomorrow before dropping down to our average of 38 degrees on Saturday. Now look for that rain snow mixture tomorrow morning, followed by some partly cloudy skies, and then we'll likely see some periods of snow throughout the day on Saturday. Now on Sunday, those temperatures are going to drop down into the mid 30s. We should get a break from precipitation on Sunday for that precipitation returns on Monday. We'll likely see some snow showers on both Monday and on Wednesday. High temperature is going to drop down right around freezing on Monday and those lows going to drop down into the upper teens across much of the valley. But the high temperature should drop jump up into the upper 30s on Tuesday before dropping down to the mid 30s once again on Wednesday. Then moving over to the mountains, they'll likely see some snow showers early on on Friday, followed by some partly cloudy skies. High temperatures going to be right around freezing both today and tomorrow before dropping down below freezing on Saturday. Now they'll likely see some snow showers from Saturday through Wednesday and next week. High temperature is going to drop down into the mid 20s on Sunday and they'll drop all the way down to the low 20s on Monday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly four degrees. Those low temperatures should jump back up into the teens on both Tuesday and Wednesday. And as for high temperatures, they should jump up into the upper 20s on Tuesday before returning to the low 20s on Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News, chaos at Target over a cop. Why this limited edition item is making waves. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 553 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Welcoming news for air travelers. 2023 had the lowest flight cancellation rate in the last 10 years. That's according to the Transportation Department. DOT releasing data showing that 1.2% cancellation rates across more than 16 million flights for that year. That's below the 10 year average of 1.7% and significantly down from 2.3% in 2022. Holiday 22 travel was extremely frustrating for customers amid an airline meltdown that snowballed from winter storm disruptions. And that may be where the cancellation data stands out the most. Holiday travel from December 17th to January 1st saw just a 0.8% cancellation rate this time this year, or last year rather, over the same time period in late 2022, that was 8.2%. The data shows 69% of cancellations in all of 2023 were weather related. 19% were due to volume issues, while the remainder were a combination of runway, equipment, staffing, and other issues. Well, maybe you're not looking forward to the next holiday. Valentine's Day, just a month away, but don't stress too much. Sweethearts has something special for those who are single this Valentine's Day. The Heart Shaped Candies Company releasing limited edition situationship boxes as the perfect gift for those not in a relationship during the Valentine's Day holiday. Now these boxes filled with hearts with blurry messages are what Sweetheart calls sweet muddled nothings and literal mixed messages to capture what singles are actually dealing with. Now the special Valentine's treat will be available for purchase on sweetheartscandies.com beginning on Monday. 
SpaceX is being accused of illegally firing workers that were critical of owner Elon Musk. In a complaint, the National Labor Relations Board said SpaceX wrongly dismissed eight employees for circulating a letter critical of Musk. The board says their dismissal violated federal laws around employee rights. SpaceX has not commented on the NLRB complaint. All right, well, mayhem at Target over this limited edition cup. Target's new Valentine's Day Stanley collection, the Galentine's Day collection, already sold out. Several TikTok videos showing people rushing to grab one. Target and Stanley collaborating to release the limited edition tumblers, which come in two colors, Target Red and Cosmo Pink. According to Delish, they're already up on resale sites like eBay, listed at prices up to $240. And you can now use your own cup for drive through and app orders at Starbucks. Just let them know you have your own mug when you order through the drive through They'll grab it at the pickup window using a contactless vessel. On the app, order under customization. Choose the new personal cup option. Your cup has to be clean and less than 40 ounces. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, several border crossings set to reopen today. The arguments about what to do about the border crisis. Plus, some Americans may have trouble saving. Why people making $100,000 a year say they're still living paycheck to paycheck. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos. Rain and snow after rain and snow yesterday. Conditions should be drier today. However, an active pattern will bring multiple storms to our region over the coming days. I'll give you a look at those storms coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an Idaho influencer in court today. The decision she may make after being accused of a hit and run. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Jacobson. This morning, more Idahoans losing thousands of dollars to scammers. What to look out for that could save your life savings. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza in Caldwell on this Thursday morning. It's January 4th, 2024. Vasily Varlamos will have your weather coming up in just a bit. But first, new this morning, Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief saying Wednesday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in the attack, no matter where they are. It comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in a strike earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Ukraine has been coming under heavy missile strikes from Russia for days now. And while it managed to shoot down most of those missiles, on Tuesday, five people were killed and 130 injured, with the residential building destroyed in the capital. A stark reminder that while the eyes of the world are on the Middle East, Ukrainians continue to live under attack. The head of the armed forces says they need resources, saying it would cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of the world safe. Well, there are still dozens of people missing after a series of earthquakes in Japan. Japanese officials increasing the number of reported missing people from 15 to 79. The death toll now standing at 84. Hundreds of others have been injured. Japan's western coastline was initially hit with a 7.6 magnitude earthquake back on Monday. There have been dozens of aftershocks since then. More documents related to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are expected to be released gradually over the next few days. The documents do not contain a list of Epstein's clients. Pages released yesterday mention former presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, but do not accuse them of any wrongdoing. While Epstein's legal woes played out publicly, court documents redacted the names of some of the, his accusers and associates. Ultimately, nearly 200 people could be named. Some names were already revealed when Epstein's partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, was convicted of sex trafficking in 2021. It's unknown what all the documents could contain. 
Well, back here at home, a local social media influencer, influencer rather, could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodgson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter, accused of hitting and killing a woman back in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she's due in court today. We'll let you know what happens. Hodgson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers online with workout guides and more geared towards moms. Well, yesterday we told you about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zerkatis is or Zerkatis rather is from Nampa. He stole that single engine plane and damaged other planes, trying to break into them just days before California police meeting him at his unauthorized landings. He faces charges in both California and soon Nevada, and now he has a warrant in Ada County for violating parole by doing this. The sentence is for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom. A man attacking a Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holthus was in the middle of sentencing D. Over Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holthus. Several other people then fight with Redden before throwing him to the ground. According to court records, the attack happened just moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and Marshall was hospitalized after the attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. San Antonio police say they have now arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. 19 year old Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Gara. 53 year old Ramon Preciado charged with abuse of a corpse accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared just one day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there could be more charges connected to the unborn baby. Well, in a few weeks, Americans in Iowa will start voting for a Republican presidential candidate. But around that same time, one of those candidates will be on trial. Donald Trump's attorneys heading to court January 16th after a federal appeals court denied former President Trump's request to delay E. Jean Carroll's defamation trial. Now, in Carroll's first lawsuit, Trump was found liable back in May of sexually abusing and defaming the writer in order to pay $5 million in damages to her. In his second lawsuit, a federal judge ruling back in September that Trump was liable for defaming Carol when he denied her rape accusations back in 2019. Well, Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review a ruling barring him from the Colorado primary ballot over his role in the January 6 Capitol riots. The decision from the Colorado Supreme Court last month citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have quote engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Just on Tuesday, Trump appealed a similar decision from Maine's Secretary of State. Meantime, a legal win for the former president, a federal judge dismissing most of the civil charges filed against Trump over the death of a United States Capitol Police officer, Brian Sicknick, who died following the January 6 riots. It includes the wrongful death claim brought by Sicknick's former longtime partner, Sandra Garza. She's suing Trump and two convicted rioters for 10 million in damages. Because she wasn't Sicknick's spouse or official domestic partner, the judge only allowing her case to move forward on the remaining two claims, which accused Trump and the rioters of joining a conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. And President Biden marking the third anniversary of the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol with a speech in Pennsylvania near the historic Revolutionary War site of Valley Forge. The president expected to lay out the stakes as he sees them of the 2024 election. According to the Biden campaign, the president will make the case that democracy and freedom, quote, remain central to the fight we're in today. Trump is also expected to hold two campaign events on that same day. And the former president also set to hold a campaign event next week. He'll be at Fox News Town Hall. He's doing that instead of attending the next GOP primary debate. Trump avoiding all debates so far. It has the other GOP candidates frustrated. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calling out Donald Trump during his own campaign event in Iowa yesterday. I accepted, Haley accepted. And so then yesterday he just announced he's going to do a town hall on Fox News the same time we're doing the debate. So if he's able to come to Iowa to do a town hall, why not just go over um, and do the debate? He's basically uh, making a mockery of this whole process 
by not showing up and answering people's questions. He doesn't think he needs to. Um, and look, ultimately, Iowans can determine uh, how they want, uh, who they want to nominate. Still, Trump maintains a big lead in the GOP polls. Well, back here at home, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its 10 chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain snow making technology. That machine making snow is so successful. Bogus Basin was able to shatter a previous snow making record this year, running snow makers for 48 hours and converting 5 million gallons of local mountain water into snow. So you see in the background is mostly machine made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. The water is pulled from the mountain's natural snow melt and waterways, ensuring that no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a break soon as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. Vasili will let us know if their wishes might come true coming up in just a minute. At Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express high-speed quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a 34-year-old one installed in 1990. It cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to just six minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And good news for skiers. It looks like the mountains are going to be getting a good dose of snow over the next couple of days. As for today, we should see some dry conditions here in the Treasure Valley. We'll like to see some mostly cloudy skies throughout the morning with a few sun breaks this afternoon. Wind speeds will start to pick up this afternoon too. We'll see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour from 2 till about 3 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today at 41 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. today. Now we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific that'll bring multiple storms into our region over the next couple of days. The first of those storms expected to arrive in the early hours of Friday morning. We'll likely see some snow showers here in the valley early on Friday, and that'll be all followed up by some periods of snow on Saturday. And this is kicking off an unsettled pattern that'll stick around through Wednesday and next week. Here's a look at the snow estimates. We're looking at about 1.7 inches of snow through Friday morning and about 1.1 inches of snow expected over in McCall through Friday morning. And after that, we're looking at the, here's a look at this unsettled pattern. We'll likely see some scattered snow showers on Saturday and that'll be followed up by an unsettled pattern with widespread showers possible on Monday night and into Tuesday and we'll likely continue to see those showers through Wednesday and this is great news for our snowpack. Here's a look at the snowpack levels right now. Much of these sitting at 50% of normal. We're sitting at 57% of normal at the Boise Basin. Now as for your ski report, these are the base steps at these mountains. 28 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches of Brundage and 17 inches of the base depth of Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, much of the valley will be in the low 40s. We'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise, Nip, Caldwell, and over in Ontario. 42 going to be the high in Emmett and Mountain Home, and moving up to the mountains, 30 going to be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasili. CBS2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Thursday morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. Chinden and State Street are both looking great from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. We do have a lot of congested traffic. Okay, it's a little bit of congested traffic on Eagle Road, northbound, southbound between Overland and Eustick. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car this morning, be sure to turn on News Talk 670 KBOY or 93.1 FM, where you can get even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, several border crossings set to reopen today. The arguments on what to do about the border crisis. Plus, trying to decide on a budget. The progress members on Capitol Hill say they're making. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look back at yesterday's question. 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. The answer is surprising. It's their toilet. All right. Now for today's question. In 1990, about 5% of Americans had one. Now close to 50% have one. What is it? is CBS 2 News this morning. 
It's 615 on your Thursday. Welcome back Four crossings along the US Mexico border set to reopen today. They were partially closed or fully closed as of last month. Officials saying they didn't have the resources to process a record surge of asylum seekers. And that move comes after House Speaker Mike Johnson led a Republican congressional delegation to Eagle Pass, Texas yesterday. Amanda Henderson spent the day learning what they say it'll take to have bipartisan discussions about our southern border. Arriving in droves, more than 60 House Republicans stepping foot at the southern border with a message for the White House. The situation here and across the country is truly unconscionable. House Speaker Mike Johnson with fiery words for the Biden administration on how they've responded to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's attempts to block migrants from crossing. And how has this administration responded? They have sued the state of Texas to stop their deterrence efforts. They have brought them to court. The congressional delegation's visit to Eagle Pass comes one day after top White House officials pointed the finger at House Republicans for border issues. Texas Democratic Congresswoman Veronica Escobar calling today's press conference performative politics. Texas Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro saying congressional Democrats and President Biden are ready to sit down and negotiate. There have been a record number of migrants entering the southern border. Last month, more than 300,000 people crossed. Not even 100 feet from where the press conference took place, we saw a family cross the Rio Grande. And right now, there are more migrants crossing the Rio Grande. You see this man right here trying to get onto U.S. soil. It's something that the members of Congress who are here today say they need to come to the table to talk about. So we asked the congressional delegation the same question. What will it take to get everyone involved in a bipartisan discussion about the border? So showing up matters until that happens. All that's going to uh, th this this crisis is going to continue. We're already starting to see bipartisan concern about this issue. The conversation started. The key is we're dealing with administration does not care. The, the reason negotiations normally win because there's, there's a place to find a call win win. When both parties say we're going to win, we might have to give up a little bit. Unless we have a willingness from this administration, we're going to continue to see that. Congressman Henry Guayar says bipartisan support is critical, speaking with us hours ahead of his own press conference about the border in Laredo. I hope the Republicans don't just sit the narratives and go back. In order to do something real, it's got to be bipartisan. I mean, I think the, uh, the American public knows exactly what's happening here. We can't talk about political narratives. We've got to talk about real solutions. Reporting in Eagle Pass, I'm Amanda Henderson. Meantime, the Senate says they're making progress on a budget. Talks continuing as the national debt spiked to an all-time high of $34 trillion. As for the budget negotiations, we've made real good, good progress in that regard, and we're getting quite close. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can get a budget agreement soon, and I'm hopeful that we could avoid a shutdown. Back in June, House Republicans agreed to a temporary extension of the debt limit, but with the debt hitting new highs, that could further complicate talks on the Hill. All right, well, take a look at this. A Colorado firefighter being called a hero for saving a dog's life, and it was all caught on camera. The ice rescue happened after the dog fell in a frozen pond. Community members at the park quickly calling 911. In the video, you can see the firefighter tied to a lifeline diving into the ice to save the dog. Once he got a hold of the canine, both were pulled back to safely. You can see them there, and the dog seems to be okay after getting all warmed up. I just want to give the dog a hug. Yeah, know, look Pops. at the sense of relief on that pup in I that know. picture. A, yeah, no, a good reminder yeah. that when you're throwing balls, you know, maybe yeah. don't do it over frozen lakes. Yes. yes. That guy's a that hero guy. for saving that dog. No, absolutely. That. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. well, speaking of warming up this morning, yep. you're definitely going to want to do that after you step outside. Yeah. yeah, it's quite chilly out there right now. <laughs> Temperatures sitting right around freezing here in the Treasure Valley this morning. And after some rain and snow yesterday, we are seeing that front that impacted us over the northern Rockies right now. We are going to see if multiple storms move into our region over the next couple of days. The first of those storms currently impacting western Washington right now. We've got a very active pattern out in the Pacific, and this will likely stick around through Wednesday and next week. Another storm is expected to arrive on Saturday. That'll bring us some more snow showers here in the valley. And today we are looking at some dry conditions. Look, at part, look for partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies today. As we head into tonight, we'll start to see that front move in. We'll see a few showers around the Treasure Valley late tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we are going to see a rain-snow mixture. We'll likely see some snow showers around 2.30 tomorrow morning. 
and that'll continue till about four or five o'clock tomorrow morning. So we'll likely wake up to some snow on the ground and then as we hit into the afternoon, conditions should start to clear up and we'll likely see some clear skies for the rest of the day on Friday before we start to see some clouds roll in on Saturday ahead of a front that'll likely bring some snow showers to us on Saturday too. Temperatures will drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday before dropping down to the mid 30s on Sunday and we'll drop all the way down to 33 degrees on Monday. We'll likely see the return of some snow showers on Monday. We'll continue to see precipitation through Wednesday and next week. We'll jump into the upper 30s on Tuesday before dropping back into the mid 30s on Wednesday. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, we'll see some early morning snow showers tomorrow. High temperatures will drop down right in or into the upper 20s on Saturday and they'll drop down into the mid 20s on Sunday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly 4 degrees. Those high temperatures will drop all the way down to 22 degrees on Monday. And they'll likely see snow showers from Saturday all the way through Wednesday over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bringing you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 621 this Thursday morning, let's get a traffic update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. And Karcher, Northside and Garrity all looking good in Nampa. On Chinden eastbound and State Street eastbound, things are going well so far. Heading into downtown Boise. That's all I got for you right now from the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio. I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with even more team traffic updates. You can get those by turning your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM, and both of those will take you to KBOI. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, rate hikes set to start going back down eventually when we can expect to see lower interest rates. Plus, some Americans may have trouble saving up. Why people making $100,000 a year say they're still living paycheck to paycheck. Is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The Federal Reserve moving cautiously on rate cuts this year. That's according to the minutes of the Fed's official, most official recent meeting last month. Well, a pivot will likely happen. They say keeping rates elevated is necessary until inflation is clearly moving toward their 2% target. Still, investors hoping cuts come soon. The inflation rate stands at 3.2% and falling. Well, hey, more than 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, but for some, lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep is a big factor. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains the costly phenomenon. What do you guys think the most expensive resort in Morocco? Netflix's Inventing Anna told the story of a fraudster posing as a wealthy heiress. She stole money to fund her lavish lifestyle. She has everything that is wrong with America right now. Most Americans aren't that bad, but many do suffer from lifestyle creep, also known as lifestyle inflation. It's when your spending goes up as a result of your income going up. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we make more money, we think that we should spend more money too. So you can get an idea of just how widespread this problem is. Almost half of Americans who make more than $100,000 per year are living paycheck to paycheck. What she began to teach me was, hey, you, you know, you're driving your opportunities down the highway. LaShawn Holland, a wealthy lifestyle coach, says she struggled with lifestyle creep, too. She used to buy a new car every few years until a mentor helped her realize she was losing hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing so. No one has ever taught us, for the most part, how not to live off 100 percent of your income. Right. And so we earn it. We spend it. We earn it. We spend it without any consideration of investing it. She says the best way to avoid lifestyle creep is to ask yourself what's important and to pause before purchasing. Does it really bring meaning to my life? Does it really add value to my life? She also suggests having a plan for spending, saving, and investing. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. The FTC getting 2.4 million reports of fraud just last year. Federal and local law enforcement warning of even more this year. Many Idahoans lose life savings and retirements to scammers. So to identify when you may be getting scammed, the first red flag to watch out for is if the scammer is trying to play on your emotions. Some other red flags look for misspellings in a message or in the domain of a website. If you do become a victim of a scam, please contact local law enforcement right away. The sooner you report the scam, the higher the chances are that you can get your money back. 
Coming up on CBS 2 News, Israel targeting Hamas leaders. We have more when we come back. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 6.30 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A local social media influencer could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter. She's accused of hitting and killing a woman back in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she'll be in court today. We'll let you know what happens. Hodson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers online with her workout guides and more geared towards moms. Well, we told you yesterday about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it over to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zucatis from Nampa stole the single engine plane and damaged other planes, trying to break into them just days before. California police meeting him at his unauthorized landing. He's facing charges in California and soon Nevada. And now he has a warrant in Ada County for violating his parole by doing this. The sentence for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom. A man attacking a Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holthus was in the middle of sentencing Deobra Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holthus. Several other people then fight with Redden before throwing him to the ground. According to court records, the attack happening just moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and Marshall was hospitalized after the attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. San Antonio police say they have now arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. 19 year old Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Gara. 53 year old Raymond Preciado is charged with abuse of a corpse accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there could be more charges connected to the unborn baby. Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief saying yesterday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in the attack, no matter where they are. This comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in a strike earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Back here in the U.S., the White House says Hamas still has a significant force posture inside Gaza. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby says the U.S. has estimates on how many members of Hamas are left, but declined to provide any numbers. I think I'm going to let Israel characterize how they've been doing, but they have, without question, let me just say this broadly, they have had an effect uh, on uh, Hamas's ability to command and control itself, to resource itself, and quite frankly, to lead their troops. Israel vows to wipe out Hamas following the militant group's deadly October 7th attacks. Kirby was pressed on this goal yesterday. He says though it may not be possible to eliminate an ideology, the threat that Hamas poses to the Israeli people can be eliminated. The White House says the U.S. has not given up hope and continues to work to free the hostages who are being held by Hamas. What I can tell you uh, is that the conversations are ongoing, they're real. Um, and we are pursuing them with the same sense of energy that we were, you know, a month or two ago when we were able to get um, uh, some 50 hostages out. Kirby says he does not have any specific progress to report as of yesterday. He notes U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke with Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs yesterday to discuss military operations and efforts to secure the release of the remaining hostages. An estimated 240 people were taken hostage during Hamas's deadly October 7th attack. The State Department believes six Americans remain unaccounted for. Well, a senior official in the U.S. Education Department says he left his job because of how the Biden administration is handling the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. Education policy advisor Tariq Habash is a Palestinian American. He notes the overseas conflict impacts Jewish, Muslims and Arabs here in the U.S. 
arguing students don't feel safe on college campuses. Habash saying President Biden has the power to end this violence, which he says has a lot of Democratic voter support. And the refusal by the president to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire is untenable with um, the, um, the belief by millions of Americans across this country. This resignation coming after State Department official Josh Paul stepped down from his role back in October, saying he disagreed with America's lethal assistance to Israel. Well, we still don't know who was behind Wednesday's bombing at a ceremony honoring slain Iranian General Hossem Soleimani. Iranian officials saying at least 84 people were killed when two bombs exploded near Soleimani's grave back on Wednesday. Iran's government vowing to punish those responsible for the blasts. No group has officially claimed responsibility. Soleimani was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Iraq back in January of 2020. Well, American and South Korean troops holding military drills near, near North Korea's border. South Korea's military saying it concluded joint combat firing drills near the North Korean border as of this morning. The drills starting a week ago. South Korea's army saying those drills are a way to test and enhance its combat readiness. It comes after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un earlier this week threatened to thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. Well, Ukraine asking its Western allies to expedite its decision when it comes to giving aid. The leaders of Ukraine's armed forces saying the military shot down a record number of Russian missiles earlier this week. And for Ukraine to fight back, the country's foreign minister saying weapons of other weapons as well as other resources are essential. It's an investment in the protection of NATO and in the protection of uh, also the prosperity of the American people. Because if Russia theoretically prevails in Ukraine, other leaders across the world will be tempted to follow Russia's footprints. The foreign minister saying it would cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of the world safe. The European Union imposing sanctions against Russia's Al Rosa. That's the world's largest diamond mining company. It's in response to the ongoing war in Ukraine. Under the sanctions, the CEO of the mine is banned from traveling in Europe and any assets held in the EU are frozen. The designation is part of a G7 ban on imports of Russian diamonds, which includes an exemption for Russian diamonds processed in other countries. But that exception is expected to be phased out by September. The company already being subject to similar sanctions in the U.S. since 2022. Back here at home, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its ten chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain's snow-making technology. That machine-making snow is so successful, Bogus Basin shattering a previous snow-making record this year, running snowmakers for 48 hours and converting 5 million gallons of local mountain snow water into snow. What you see in the background is mostly machine-made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. The water is pulled from the mountain's natural snowmelt and waterways, ensuring that no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a break soon, as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. Vasily will let us know if their wishes might just come true coming up in just a minute. And at Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a three-decade-old one installed back in 1990. It cuts the ride time down from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to just six minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Well, good news for skiers is the mountains look like they're going to get a good dose of snow over the next couple of days. We may even see some snow here in the Treasure Valley over the next two days, too. As for today, we're looking at dry conditions. We should see some mostly cloudy skies throughout the morning, followed by some partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Now, wind speeds will start to pick up this afternoon, too. We'll see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour between 2 and 3 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 41 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. today. Now, we have a very 
active pattern out in the Pacific with multiple storms headed our way over the next few days. The first of those expected to arrive in the early hours of Friday morning. We could even see some snow showers here on the valley floor and look for periods of snow on Saturday and that weather pattern is expected to stay unsettled through Wednesday and next week. Now here's a look at the snow estimates. We're looking at about 1.7 inches of snow here in Boise through Friday morning. We'll see about 1.1 inches of snow over McCall through Friday morning and after that we'll likely see some periods of snow on Saturday followed up by some dry conditions on Sunday. We'll take a look at this unsettled pattern as we head into next week. We'll likely see some widespread showers on Monday night and into Tuesday. We could see some snow showers continue into Wednesday. Now this is great news for our snowpack. Much of the snowpacks around the Treasure Valley sitting about fit or around the region sitting about 50 50 percent of normal. We're sitting about with about 50 percent percent of normal for the Boise Basin right now. Now as for your ski report, these are the base steps at these mountains. 28 inches over a Tamarack, 15 inches of Brundage and 17 inches over at Bogus Basin. Now as for high temperatures today, much of the valley will be in the low 40s. We'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise, Nampa, Caldwell and over in Ontario. 42 going to be the high over in Emmett and Mountain Home and moving up to the mountains. 30 going to be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 640 this morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning. The roads are slippery, so be very careful this morning. Give yourself a little bit of extra time. On Karcher heading over to the freeway, we have some slow traffic starting right about Midway Road. North side's a little busy heading up to the freeway before you get to 6th. And Garrity is also on the busy side after you get past 39th. And then on the eastbound lanes of the freeway, some congested traffic after you get past Eagle Road. That lasts for about a mile, and the merge has begun on 10 Mile and Meridian Roads. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. All right, it's time for our question of the day. The question, in 1990, 5% of Americans had one. Now, close to 50% have one. I like this question a lot. I think I'm going to switch to a viewer guest from the mm -hmm. first hour, and I'm going to say cell phones. What do you Ooh. guys think? I yeah, like that one. A definite uptick, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stick with my guest from the last hour, which is just a desktop computer yeah, at your house. That's a great guess. Okay, I think I'm also going to stick with my first guess and go with a TV in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I feel good about this, guys. All right, yeah. let's see what folks at home have to say. David says an additional TV. Okay. okay. Yeah, like that mm -hmm. one a lot. Yep. yep. Yeah. Lots of people have additional ones. All right, Ooh. Steve says a microwave. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that one. That. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, I got to think about that one. All right, Christy says a laptop computer. Yeah, yep. so going along with my guests from the mm -hmm. first hour. I like that a lot, Christy. All right, folks, if you think you know the answer, you have about 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook or Twitter, guessing on that question of the day post, and we'll reveal the answer. It's coming at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, staying healthy means eating healthy this flu season. The top foods that really prove you are what you eat. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 645 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration evaluating reports of side effects in people taking medications like Ozempic. Now, that could include hair loss and suicidal thoughts. People who take diabetic medication may also be at risk, but it means that the FDA has concluded that the drug has the listed risk and not necessarily identifying it as a potential safety issue. On its website, the agency reporting that it's evaluating the need for regulatory action after it received reports of unusual side effects. These popular drugs designed to treat diabetes or weight loss, they mimic GLP-1, a hormone therapy naturally produced in the body. Well, more U.S. hospitals requiring masks and limiting visitors. That's as health officials face an expected but still nasty post-holiday spike in flu, coronavirus, and other illness. Experts say we're doing better now than we were last year when it comes to respiratory viruses. But it's unclear when we'll hit our peak of coronavirus, the flu, and RSV. It's busy here, you know. We're seeing um, lots of upper respiratory infections come in. The CDC says one contributing factor to the rise in illness is people haven't kept up on their vaccinations. Fewer than 50% of adults are vaccinated for the flu, even fewer for COVID. 
As cold and flu viruses keep spreading, you might want to change what's on your menu. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares the top immune boosting foods to help your body fight off getting sick. Hey there, everybody. While no single food can fight off the flu, Mayo Clinic researchers say certain nutrients in foods do appear to play a role in your immune health. They are best as part of an overall healthy diet, says health coach Lindsay Bonadonna knows. In my own personal health journey is I discovered the more that I could nourish myself with whole foods and the less processed foods that I ate, I started to feel better. I started to see my life more clearly. You see, whole foods are packed with naturally occurring nutrients, the very nutrients needed to fight off <coughs> some of the bugs seriously spreading right now. Those nutrients include beta carotene. It's found in sweet potatoes, carrots, and mangoes. Vitamin C, found in citrus fruits and berries. Vitamin D, found in fatty fish such as salmon, milk, and eggs. Zinc in lean beef, beans, and nuts. Probiotics, or good bacteria, found in something like these yogurt bowls Lindsay loves. We've done all the work to make sure there's no weird ingredients. And protein, such as chicken, seeds, and beans and lentils. Now, if you're wishing you could just pop a few pills to give you these nutrients, quick reminder, the food itself has additional benefits. Phytonutrients are found in the colors, flavors, and textures of foods, and they're not found in most supplements. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. And while it may not be on the list, today is a great day to fix yourself a bowl of pasta. Today is National Spaghetti Day. Pasta is often made from semolina flour and is placed on millions of dinner tables annually. Aside from the classic tomato sauce, other popular spaghetti toppings include garlic and oil, carbonara and bolognese. Although the exact origin of spaghetti is in debate, string-like food from semolina is mentioned in a 9th century Arab dictionary. Mm. Spaghetti and meatballs looks good. It does look yeah. really good. Uh, not yeah. too early, I suppose. Yeah, not your, yeah, not it's your never, typical breakfast. I mean, 6.49 a.m. is never too early for I'd spaghetti. If it was That's leftovers, I'd still yeah. Oh, yeah. Switching gears over to weather this morning. It is quite chilly out there right now. We are seeing some dry conditions today after we saw some rain and snow yesterday. We do have a very active pattern out in the Pacific. This is going to bring us some multiple or multiple rounds of precipitation over the next couple of days. The first of those expected to arrive early on on Friday morning. This front is currently impacting western Washington. It should drop down into our region as we hit throughout the day today. Now we are looking at some dry conditions today. We should see some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies as we head into this evening. We'll likely see some showers late tonight and then we'll start to see some snow showers early on on Friday. Those should continue from 2 o'clock till about 4 30 to 5 o'clock tomorrow. Then we should see those conditions dry out as we head throughout the day on Friday. We should see some mostly clear skies by Friday afternoon and then we'll start to see some clouds roll in on Saturday ahead of a front that'll likely bring us some snow showers here in the valley. Temperatures will drop down to 38 degrees on Saturday. We'll likely see those high temperatures in the mid 30s on Sunday and we'll drop all the way down right around freezing on Monday. Those low temperatures also going to drop into the upper teens here in the valley too. Now we'll likely see a rain snow mix to some snow showers from Monday through Wednesday. Those high temperatures will jump up into the upper 30s on Tuesday before dropping down to the mid 30s on Wednesday. Meanwhile over in the mountains we'll see some early morning snow showers this or tomorrow morning. Temperatures will be right around freezing both today and tomorrow before dropping down to the upper 20s on Saturday. They'll keep on dropping as they head throughout the weekend all the way down to 22 degrees on Monday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Can it be a chilly 4 degrees? Don't like we see some snow showers from Saturday all the way through Wednesday over in the mountains. Those high temperatures will jump up into the upper 20s on Tuesday before dropping back down into the low 20s on Wednesday. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Thursday morning, let's get an update on the drive from Debbie McAllister. Good morning. It's a foggy commute and the roads are slippery. We've got extra traffic on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Garrity for a couple of miles and then 10 mile to just past Eagle Road on and off congested traffic due to a heavy merge off of 10 mile and even heavier merge off of Meridian Road. And Chinden and State Street are still looking good from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. 
Coming up on CBS 2 News, there's chaos at Target over a cup. Why this limited edition item is making waves. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 654 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Welcome news for air travelers. 2023 had the lowest flight cancellation rate in the last 10 years. That's according to the Transportation Department. DOT releasing data showing a 1.2% cancellation rate across more than 16 million flights. That's below the 10 year average of 1.7% and significantly down from 2.3% back in 2022. Holiday 22 travel was extremely frustrating for customers and that was amid airline meltdowns that snowballed from winter storm disruptions. And that may be where the cancellation data stands out the most. Holiday travel from December 17th to January 1st saw a 0.8% cancellation rate this time. Over that same period in late 2022, it was 8.2%. The data showing 69% of cancellations in all of 2023 were weather related. 19% were due to volume issues, while the remainder were a combination of runway, equipment, staffing, or other issues. Well, maybe you're not looking forward to the next holiday. Valentine's Day, a month away. But don't stress too much. Sweethearts has something special for those who are single this Valentine's Day. The Heart Shaped Candies Company releasing limited edition situationship boxes. It's the perfect gift for those not in a relationship during Valentine's Day. The boxes filled with hearts with blurry messages are what Sweethearts calls sweet muddled nothings and literal mixed messages. They say to capture what singles are dealing with. The special Valentine's treat is available for purchase on SweetheartCandies.com beginning on Monday. Well, mayhem at Target over this limited edition Stanley Cup. Target's new Valentine's Day Stanley Collection, the Galentine's Day Collection, already sold out. Several TikTok videos show people rushing to grab one. Target and Stanley collaborated to release the limited edition tumblers, which come in two colors, Target Red and Cosmo Pink. According to Delish, they're already up on resale sites like eBay, listed at prices up to $240. Oh, that's a pretty penny that's, for a water bottle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, it is now time for our question of the day. In 1995, 5% of Americans had one. Now close to 50% have one. What is it? Oh, that answer, a passport. Ooh, interesting. Lots okay. of traveling. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I like that. All right, folks, our next newscast coming up at 11. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 mobile app. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com. This is Fox 9 News This Morning. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. Welcome to Fox 9 News. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. Thank you for joining us on your Thursday morning. Let's dive right into our top stories of the day. New this morning, Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the initial October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief saying Wednesday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in the attack, no matter where they are. This comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in a strike earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Ukraine has been coming under heavy missile strikes from Russia for days now. And while it managed to shoot down most of those missiles, on Tuesday, five people were killed and 130 injured, with a residential building destroyed in the capital. A stark reminder that while the eyes of the world are on the Middle East, Ukrainians continue to live under attack. The head of the armed forces says they need resources, saying it would cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of the world safe. 
Well, there are still dozens of people missing after a series of earthquakes in Japan. Japanese officials increasing the number of reported missing people from 15 to 79. The death toll now stands at 84. Hundreds of others have been injured. Japan's western coastline was initially hit with a 7.6 magnitude earthquake back on Monday. There have been dozens of aftershocks since then. More documents related to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are expected to be released gradually over the next few days. The documents do not contain a list of Epstein's clients. Pages released yesterday mention former presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, but do not accuse them of any wrongdoing. While Epstein's legal woes played out publicly, court documents redacted the names of some of his accusers and associates. Ultimately, nearly 200 people could be named. Some names were already revealed when Epstein's partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, was convicted of sex trafficking back in 2021. It's unknown what all the documents contain. Well, back here at home, a local social media influencer could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter, accused of hitting and killing a woman in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she'll be in court today. And we'll let you know what happens. Hodgson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers online with her workout guides and more geared towards moms. And we told you yesterday about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zucatis from Nampa stole that single engine plane. He damaged other planes, trying to break into them in the days ahead. California police meeting him at his unauthorized landing over the weekend. He faces charges in California and soon Nevada, and now he has a warrant in Ada County for violating parole by doing this. The sentence for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom as a man attacks a Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holtis was in the middle of sentencing Diober Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holtis. Several other people then fighting with Redden before throwing him on the ground. According to court records, the attack happened just moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and a marshal was hospitalized after that attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. San Antonio police say they have now arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teen and her boyfriend. 19-year-old Christopher Preciado was charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and 22-year-old Matthew Gara. 53-year-old Ramon Preciado charged with abuse of a corpse, accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared just a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there could be more charges connected to the unborn baby. Well, in just a few weeks, Americans in Iowa will start voting for the Republican presidential candidate of their choice. But around that same time, one of those candidates will be on trial. Donald Trump's attorneys headed to court January 16th after a federal appeals court denied former President Trump's request to delay E. Jean Carroll's defamation trial. Now, in Carroll's first lawsuit, Trump was found liable back in May of sexually abusing and defaming the writer. He was ordered to pay $5 million in damages to her. In his second lawsuit, a federal judge ruling in September that Trump was liable for defaming Carol when he denied her rape accusations back in 2019. And meantime, Trump asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review a ruling barring him from the Colorado primary ballot over his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. The decision from the Colorado Supreme Court last month citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which states officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Just on Tuesday, Trump appealed a similar decision from Maine's Secretary of State. Meantime, a legal win for the former president, a federal judge dismissing most of the civil charges filed against Donald Trump over the death of the United States police capital or the United States Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick, who died following the January 6 riots. This includes the wrongful death claim brought by Sicknick's longtime former partner, Sandra Garza. She's suing Trump and two convicted rioters for 10 million in damages, but because she wasn't Sicknick's spouse or official domestic partner, the judge only allowing her case to move forward on the remaining two claims, which accused Trump and the rioters of joining a conspiracy to interfere with civil rights.
And President Biden marking the third anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol with a speech in Pennsylvania. It happened near the historic revolutionary site of Valley Forge. The president expected to lay out the stakes as he sees them of the 2024 election. According to the Biden campaign, the president will make that case that democracy and freedom, quote, remain central to the fight we're in today. Now, Trump is also expected to hold two campaign events on the same day. And the former president also set to hold a campaign event next week. He'll be at the Fox News Town Hall. He's doing that instead of attending the next GOP primary debate. Trump avoiding all the debates so far. It has the other GOP candidates frustrated. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calling out Donald Trump during his own campaign event in Iowa yesterday. I accepted, Haley accepted. And so then yesterday he just announced he's going to do a town hall on Fox News the same time we're doing the debate. So if he's able to come to Iowa to do a town hall, why not just go over um, and do the debate? He's basically uh, making a mockery of this whole process by not showing up and answering people's questions. He doesn't think he needs to. Um, and look, ultimately, Iowans can determine uh, how they want, uh, who they want to nominate. Still, Trump maintains his big lead in the GOP polls. Back here at home, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its 10 chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain's snow making technology. That machine making snow was so successful, Bogus Basin was able to shatter a previous snow making record this year, running snowmakers for 48 hours and converting 5 million gallons of local mountain water into snow. So you see in the background is mostly machine made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. The water is pulled from the mountain's natural snowmelt and waterways, ensuring no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a break soon, as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. And Vasily will let us know if their wishes may just come true in just a minute. And at Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a 34-year-old one installed back in 1990. And it cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 minutes just to 6 minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Well, good news for skiers. It looks like the mountains are going to get a good dose of snow over the next couple of days. As for here in the Treasure Valley, we may see some snow early on on Friday morning. Now, as for today, we should see some dry conditions. Temperatures will be right around freezing at 9 a.m. Jumping into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 41 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. Now, we are going to see some snow showers early on Friday, kicking off an unsettled pattern that will likely stick around through Wednesday and next week. We'll likely see another round of snow showers on Saturday, and we'll continue to see a rain snow snow mixture on Monday, Tuesday, and possibly on Wednesday next week. Now as for that snow early on on Friday morning, snow estimates have us at about 1.7 inches of snow here in Boise through Friday morning. They'll have about 1.1 inches of snow over in McCall, and we'll likely continue to see some precipitation on Saturday. We should dry out for most of Sunday, but as we head into Monday, we'll see the return of precipitation. We'll likely continue to see some showers into Wednesday next week. Now, this is great news for our snowpack. Much of our snowpacks right now across the Gem State sitting at about 50% of normal right now we're sitting at about 57 percent of normal here at the Boise Basin. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains 28, 28 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches of Brundage and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin and then as for your fishing game forecast that morning peak set to pass in just a bit at around 720 this morning and then our evening peak set to arrive at around 8 p.m. tonight. Now as for high temperatures today much of the valley will be in the low 40s. We'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise, Nampa, Caldwell and over in Ontario. 42 going to be the high over in Emmett and over in Mountain Home. Then moving up to the mountains. 38 going to be the high over in Idaho City. 35 looking like the high in Sun Valley and 30 going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 710 this Thursday morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister.
Good morning. It's foggy and slippery out on the roads this morning. Be very careful. Give yourself some extra time. On the eastbound lanes of the freeway, a little bit of congested traffic around Northside Boulevard, but not too bad. On Karcher, heading over to the freeway, got some extra traffic starting at Middleton Road and some extra traffic on Garrity heading up to the freeway from 39th. More congested traffic on the eastbound lanes of the freeway starting at 10 Mile and continuing past Cloverdale. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. Some important reminders as you hit the road this morning. And of course, when you hop in the car for even more reminders and team traffic updates, just turn on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Straight ahead on Fox 9 News, several border crossings set to reopen today. The arguments on what to do about the border crisis. Plus, trying to decide on a budget. The progress members on Capitol Hill say they're making. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 714 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Four crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border set to reopen today. They were partially or fully closed last month. Officials saying they didn't have the resources to process a record surge of asylum seekers. And that move comes after House Speaker Mike Johnson led a Republican congressional delegation down in Eagle Pass yesterday. That's in Texas. Amanda Henderson spent the day learning what they say it'll take to have bipartisan discussions about our southern border. Arriving in droves, more than 60 House Republicans stepping foot at the southern border with a message for the White House. The situation here and across the country is truly unconscionable. House Speaker Mike Johnson with fiery words for the Biden administration on how they've responded to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's attempts to block migrants from crossing. And how has this administration responded? They have sued the state of Texas to stop their deterrence efforts. They have brought them to court. The congressional delegation's visit to Eagle Pass comes one day after top White House officials pointed the finger at House Republicans for border issues. Texas Democratic Congresswoman Veronica Escobar calling today's press conference performative politics. Texas Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro saying congressional Democrats and President Biden are ready to sit down and negotiate. There have been a record number of migrants entering the southern border. Last month, more than 300,000 people crossed. Not even 100 feet from where the press conference took place, we saw a family cross the Rio Grande. And right now, there are more migrants crossing the Rio Grande. You see this man right here trying to get onto U.S. soil. It's something that the members of Congress who are here today say they need to come to the table to talk about. So we asked the congressional delegation the same question. What will it take to get everyone involved in a bipartisan discussion about the border? So showing up matters. Until that happens, all that's going to uh, this this crisis is going to continue. We're already starting to see bipartisan concern about this issue. The conversation has started. The key is we're dealing with administration does not care. The, the reason negotiations normally win because there's, there's a place for time called win-win. When both parties say we're going to win, we might have to give up a little bit. Unless we have a willingness from this administration, we're going to continue to see that. Congressman Henry Guayar says bipartisan support is critical, speaking with us hours ahead of his own press conference about the border in Laredo. I hope the Republicans don't just sit the narratives and go back. In order to do something real, it's got to be bipartisan. I mean, I think the, uh, the American public knows exactly what's happening here. We can't talk about political narratives. We've got to talk about real solutions. Reporting in Eagle Pass, I'm Amanda Henderson. Meantime, the Senate says they're making progress on a budget. Talks continue as the national debt spiked to an all-time high of $34 trillion. As for the budget negotiations, we've made real good, good progress in that regard, and we're getting quite close. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can get a budget agreement soon, and I'm hopeful that we could avoid a shutdown. Back in June, House Republicans agreed to a temporary extension of the debt limit, but with the debt hitting new highs, that could further complicate talks on the Hill. All right, take a look at this. A Colorado firefighter being called a hero for saving a dog's life, and it was all caught on camera. The ice rescue happening after the dog fell in a frozen pond. 
community members at the park quickly calling 911. In that video, you can see the firefighter tied to a lifeline diving into the ice to save the dog. Once he got a hold of the canine, you can see they were both pulled back to safety. The dog seems to be okay after getting all warmed up. Oh, you can see the relief on his face. I in that know. Picture. Well, definitely a group effort on their part. Very thankful yeah. they were there quickly. Yeah, that yeah. man's a hero. But switching yeah. gears over to weather this morning, it's quite chilly out there right now. We are going to see some dry conditions around the valley today. After we saw some rain and snow yesterday, that front that did impact us yesterday now over the northern Rockies. And we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific right now. We're going to see multiple storms moving into our region. The first of those storms currently impacting western Washington right now. This is set to drop into our region. Later on, or after, actually on Friday morning, that'll be in the early hours of Friday morning. We'll see some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies today. And as we head into the later hours of this evening, we'll start to see some showers impact the valley. It'll likely be rain at first, but then we'll start to see that turn to snow as we head into the early hours of Friday morning. And we'll likely see some snow showers till about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then we'll start to see conditions dry out on Friday. May even see some clear skies as we head into the afternoon. But then as we head into Saturday, we'll start to see some increasing clouds ahead of a front that'll likely bring us some periods of rain on Saturday. High temperature is going to drop down into the upper 30s and will drop down into the mid 30s on Sunday. Those highs will drop all the way down right around freezing on Monday and we'll likely see some snow showers on Monday and possibly on Wednesday. We'll see a wintry mix of rain and snow on Tuesday as those high temperatures jump up into the upper 30s. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, we'll see some early morning snow showers tomorrow. High temperature is going to be right around freezing both today and tomorrow before dropping down to the upper 20s on Saturday. Now those high temperatures will keep on dropping. They'll drop all the way down to 20 22 degrees on Monday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning over in the mountains. Going to be a chilly 4 degrees. Now snow showers should begin on Saturday and they'll continue to see some periods of snow through Wednesday and next week over in the mountains. High temperatures will jump up into the upper 20s on Tuesday before dropping back down into the low 20s on Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bring in your team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 720 this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We have some congested traffic between Karcher and Garrity. And Karcher's a little busy heading over to the freeway from Middleton Road. We have extra traffic on north side as well before you get to 6th. And heavy traffic on Garrity starting right about 39th. More slow traffic between Meridian Road and just past Eagle Road on the eastbound lanes as well. Heavy traffic Meridian Road northbound to the freeway. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Coming up on Fox 9 News, rate hikes are set to start going down eventually. What we can expect to see in lower interest rates. Plus, some Americans may be having trouble saving. Why people making $100,000 a year say they're still living paycheck to paycheck. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 724 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The Federal Reserve moving cautiously on rate cuts this year. That's according to the minutes of the Fed's official most recent meeting last month. While a pivot will likely happen, they say keeping rates elevated. It's necessary until inflation is clearly moving toward their 2% market. Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinting at this point just last month. The inflation data received so far for October and November show a welcome reduction in the monthly pace of price increases. But it will take substantially more evidence to give confidence that inflation is on a sustained downward path. The stock market jumping after those comments with traders penciling in multiple rate cuts for next year or for this year rather, giving investors hope the economy may have ridden out the storm. The inflation rate stands at 3.2 percent and falling. Well, more than 60% of Americans currently live paycheck to paycheck, but for some, lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep is a major factor. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains this costly phenomenon. What do you guys think the most expensive resort in Morocco? 
Netflix's Inventing Anna told the story of a fraudster posing as a wealthy heiress. She stole money to fund her lavish lifestyle. She has everything that is wrong with America right now. Most Americans aren't that bad, but many do suffer from lifestyle creep, also known as lifestyle inflation. It's when your spending goes up as a result of your income going up. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we make more money, we think that we should spend more money too. So you can get an idea of just how widespread this problem is. Almost half of Americans who make more than $100,000 per year are living paycheck to paycheck. What she began to teach me was, hey, you, you know, you're driving your opportunities down the highway. LaShawn Holland, a wealthy lifestyle coach, says she struggled with lifestyle creep, too. She used to buy a new car every few years until a mentor helped her realize she was losing hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing so. No one has ever taught us, for the most part, how not to live off 100 percent of your income. Right. And so we earn it. We spend it. We earn it. We spend it without any consideration of investing it. She says the best way to avoid lifestyle creep is to ask yourself what's important and to pause before purchasing. Does it really bring meaning to my life? Does it really add value to my life? She also suggests having a plan for spending, saving, and investing. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. The FTC getting 2.4 million reports of fraud just last year. Federal and local law enforcement warning of even more this year. Many Idahoans lose life savings and retirements to scammers. And officials say these criminals are targeting anyone with a computer. It could be asking you to provide you know, your personal information. What's your address? You know, what's your even your social security number, which is something obviously you would really need to provide. So to identify when you may be getting scammed, the first red flag to watch out for is if the scammer is trying to play on your emotions. Some other red flags look out for misspellings in a message or in the domain of a website. If you do become a victim of a scam, please contact lo local law enforcement right away. The sooner you report the scam, the higher the chances are that you can get your money back. Coming up on Fox 9 News, Israel targeting Hamas leaders. What's next as the war in the Middle East expands? Fox 9 News this morning. It's 7.30 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A local social media influencer could admit to a hit and run today. Natalie Hodson facing charges of vehicular manslaughter. She's accused of killing or hitting and killing a woman back in August of 2022. Her trial scheduled for February, but she'll be in court today. We'll let you know what happens. Hodson gaining hundreds of thousands of followers online with workout guides and more geared towards moms. Well, we told you yesterday about a man who stole a plane from Nevada and flew it to California over the weekend. Well, it turns out that man is from Idaho. Police say 40 year old Damien Zucatis from Nampa stole that single engine plane. He damaged other planes, trying to break into them in the days before. California police meeting him at his unauthorized landing. He's facing charges in California and soon Nevada. And now he has a warrant in Ada County for violating his parole by doing so. The sentence is for felony stalking and battery. A shocking scene in the courtroom as a man attacks a Las Vegas judge yesterday and injuring a marshal in the process. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holtis was in the middle of sentencing Deobra Redden for aggravated battery when all of a sudden the 30 year old leaps over the judge's bench and attacks Holtis. Several other people then fight with Redden before throwing him to the ground. According to court records, the attack happened moments after the judge denied Redden probation, citing his criminal history. The judge sustained minor injuries and a marshal was hospitalized after that attack. Redden is now being held in jail on new charges and is due back in court today. San Antonio police say they have now arrested a father and son in the murder of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend, 19 year old Christopher Preciano, charged with capital murder in the deaths of 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Gara. 53 year old Ramon Preciano charged with abuse of a corpse, accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared just a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced to give birth. Prosecutors say there could be more charges connected to the unborn baby. 
Israel says it will continue to target Hamas's leaders involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. Israel's intelligence chief said yesterday his agency will track down every Hamas member involved in the attack, no matter where they are. This comes after a top Hamas leader was killed in a strike earlier this week in Beirut, Lebanon. Israel has not commented on reports that it carried out that strike. Back here in the U.S., the White House says Hamas still has a significant force posture inside Gaza. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby says the U.S. has estimates on how many members of Hamas are left, but declined to provide any numbers. I think I'm going to let Israel characterize how they've been doing, but they have, without question, let me just say this broadly, they have had an effect uh, on uh, Hamas's ability to command and control itself, to resource itself, and quite frankly, to lead their troops. Israel vows to wipe out Hamas following the militant group's deadly October 7th attacks. Kirby was pressed on this goal yesterday. He says though it may not be possible to eliminate an ideology, the threat that Hamas poses to the Israeli people can be eliminated. The White House says the U.S. has not given up hope and continues to work to free the hostages who are being held by Hamas. What I can tell you uh, is that the conversations are ongoing, they're real. Um, and we are pursuing them with the same sense of energy that we were, you know, a month or two ago when we were able to get um, uh, some 50 hostages out. Kirby says he does not have any specific progress to report as of yesterday. He notes U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke with Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs to discuss military operations and efforts to secure the release of any remaining hostages. An estimated 240 people were taken hostage during Hamas's deadly October 7th attack. The State Department believes six Americans still remain unaccounted for. A senior official in the U.S. Education Department says he left his job because of how the Biden administration is handling the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. Education policy advisor Tariq Habash is a Palestinian-American. He notes the overseas conflict is impacting Jewish, Muslims and Arabs here in the U.S., arguing students don't feel safe on college campuses. Habash says President Biden has the power to end this violence, which he says has a lot of Democratic voter support. And the refusal by the president to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire is untenable with um, the, um, the belief by millions of Americans across this country. This resignation coming after State Department official Josh Paul stepped down from his role back in October, saying he disagreed with America's lethal assistance to Israel. We still don't know who was behind Wednesday's bombing at a ceremony honoring slain Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Iranian officials saying at least 84 people were killed when two bombs exploded near Soleimani's grave. Iran's government has vowed to punish those responsible for the blast. No group has yet claimed responsibility. Soleimani was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Iraq back in January of 2020. Well, American and South Korean troops holding military drills near North Korea's border. South Korea's military saying it concluded joint combat firing drills near the North Korean border today. The drills starting just a week ago. South Korea's army saying their drills are a way to test and impact or enhance their combat readiness. It comes after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un threatened earlier this week to thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. Well, Ukraine asking its Western allies to expedite decisions when it comes to giving aid. The leader of Ukraine's army forces saying the military shot down a record number of Russian missiles earlier this week. And for Ukraine to fight back, the country's foreign minister saying weapons and other resources are essential. It's an investment in the protection of NATO and in the protection of uh, also the prosperity of the American people. Because if Russia theoretically prevails in Ukraine, other leaders across the world will be tempted to follow Russia's footprints. The foreign minister saying it would cost more for Western countries to keep multiple parts of the world safe. The European Union imposing sanctions against Russia's Al Rosa. That's the world's largest diamond mining company. It's in response to the ongoing war in Ukraine. Under the sanctions, the CEO of the mine is banned from traveling to Europe and any assets being held in the EU will be frozen. The designation is part of a G7 ban on imports of Russian diamonds, which does include an exemption for Russian diamonds processed in other countries. But that exception is expected to be phased out by September. 
The company has already been subject to similar sanctions in the U.S. since 2022. Well, back here at home, we aren't seeing a lot of snow yet this winter, but the slow season not stopping our ski resorts. Bogus Basin has nine of its 10 chairlifts around the mountain up and running. It's all because of the mountain's snowmaking technology. The machine making snow is so successful, Bogus Basin shattering a previous snowmaking record this year, running snowmakers for 48 hours and converting a whopping 5 million gallons of local mountain water into snow. So you see in the background is mostly machine made snow. Uh, the investment we've made over the last five or six years in snowmaking has really paid off this year. The water is pulled from the mountains, natural snowmelt and waterways, ensuring no water is removed or added to the ecosystem. But officials are hoping to give their snowmakers a bit of a break soon as they hope for more wet weather in the forecast. And Vasili will let us know if their wishes may come true coming up in just a minute. First, at Brundage Mountain Resort, you can try the new Centennial Express high-speed quad starting tomorrow. The new chairlift replacing a three-decade-old one installed back in 1990. It cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to just six minutes. There's a celebration at the base of the new lift starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And some good news for skiers is that it looks like the mountains are going to get a good dose of snow over the next couple of days. As for today here in the Treasure Valley, we should see some dry conditions with partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. We are seeing some areas of patchy fog this morning. Temperatures sitting around 32 to 31 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today at 41 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. Now, while we'll see partly cloudy skies today, we'll see the first of multiple fronts arrive in our region early on on Friday morning. That'll likely bring us some snow showers and we'll see some more snow showers on Saturday. This is kicking off an unsettled pattern that will likely stick around through Wednesday and next week. Now as for that snowfall on Friday, we're looking at about 1.7 inches here in Boise through Friday morning. We'll see about 1.1 inches of snow over in McCall and they're looking at about 0.8 inches of snow over in Twin Falls through Friday morning. Now after that, we'll likely see some snow showers on Saturday and while we're looking at dry conditions on Sunday, this unsettled pattern will likely produce some precipitation on Monday, Tuesday and possibly on Wednesday next week. We could see some widespread showers from Monday night into Tuesday. Now we are looking at some snow over the next couple of days over in some mountains because some great news because right now many of our snow packs sitting at about 50% of normal right now. The Boise Basin sitting at about 57% of normal. Now as for your ski report, these are the base steps at these mountains. 28 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for the, your fishing game forecast, that morning peak just passed at around 720 this morning and our evening peak set to arrive at around 8 p.m tonight and as for high temperatures today much of the valley will be in the low 40s we'll see a high of 41 degrees in boise napa caldwell and over in ontario today 42 going to be the high over in emmett and mountain home and moving up to the mountains 30 going to be the high mccall thank you vasili fox 9 news and news talk kboy bring you team traffic all morning long and as we take a live look out there this morning let's get an update on our morning drive from debbie McAllister. Good morning. The roads are slippery. Be very careful. Give yourself some extra time. On the eastbound lanes, we have congested conditions from Northside Boulevard all the way over to Cloverdale. And that's on the eastbound lanes. Meridian Road is quite busy from Lake Hazel all the way up to the freeway with a heavy merge onto the eastbound lanes. From the Newstock KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with more team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Well, coming up on Fox 9 News, staying healthy means eating healthy this flu season. The top foods that really prove you are what you eat. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 745. Welcome back. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration evaluating reports of side effects in people taking medications like Ozempic. They could include hair loss and suicidal thoughts. People who take diabetic medications may also be at risk, but this just means that the FDA has concluded that the drug has the listed risk and not necessarily identified it as a potential safety issue. On its website, the agency reporting that it is evaluating its need for regulatory action after it received reports of unusual side effects. 
These popular drugs, designed to treat diabetes or weight loss, they mimic GLP-1. It's a hormone naturally produced in the body. Well, more U.S. hospitals requiring masks and limiting visitors as health officials face an unexpected, or pardon me, unexpected, but still nasty post-holiday spike in flu, coronavirus, and other illnesses. Experts say we're doing better now than we were last year when it comes to respiratory illness, but it's unclear when we'll hit our peak. It's busy here, you know, we're seeing um, lots of upper respiratory infections come in. The CDC says one contributing factor to the rise in illness is people haven't kept up with vaccinations. Fewer than 50% of American adults are vaccinated for the flu, even fewer for COVID. As cold and flu viruses keep spreading, you might want to change what's on your menu. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares the top immune boosting foods to help your body fight off getting sick. Hey there, everybody. While no single food can fight off the flu, Mayo Clinic researchers say certain nutrients in foods do appear to play a role in your immune health. They are best as part of an overall healthy diet, says health coach Lindsay Bonadonna knows. In my own personal health journey is I discovered the more that I could nourish myself with whole foods and the less processed foods that I ate, I started to feel better. I started to see my life more clearly. You see, whole foods are packed with naturally occurring nutrients, the very nutrients needed to fight off <coughs> some of the bugs seriously spreading right now. Those nutrients include beta carotene. It's found in sweet potatoes, carrots, and mangoes. Vitamin C, found in citrus fruits and berries. Vitamin D, found in fatty fish such as salmon, milk, and eggs. Zinc in lean beef, beans, and nuts. Probiotics, or good bacteria, found in something like these yogurt bowls Lindsay loves. We've done all the work to make sure there's no weird ingredients. And protein, such as chicken, seeds, and beans and lentils. Now, if you're wishing you could just pop a few pills to give you these nutrients, quick reminder, the food itself has additional benefits. Phytonutrients are found in the colors, flavors, and textures of foods, and they're not found in most supplements. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Americans cutting back on beer. One report showing beer shipments on track to fall below 200 million barrels for the first time since 1999. And Bud Light maker Anheuser-Busch was among one of the worst hit due to a boycott. But the drop is part of a larger trend as the beer industry competes with new alcohol products and Americans are drinking less overall. Well, today is a great day to fix yourself a bowl of pasta. It's National Spaghetti Day. Pasta, often made from semolina flour and is placed on millions of dinner tables annually. Aside from the classic tomato sauce, some other popular spaghetti toppings include garlic, oil, carbonara, and bolognese. Although the exact origin of the spaghetti is in debate, string-like food from semolina is mentioned in a 9th century Arab dictionary. Oh, I could eat some spaghetti this morning. I'm I know. Lie, you guys. I can hear my stomach growling from here. <laughs> I know. I think we are going to need more breakfast places mm -hmm. offering spaghetti due to this reason. Maybe just and some breakfast only. days too, instead of just these. Think me thinking of dinner at mm -hmm. six a.m., yeah. seven a.m. in the morning. Hey, That's... we don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, as far as this morning, though, let's switch gears. Talk mm -hmm. about the weather. Yeah. It's a still a little foggy out there mm -hmm. this morning. Be aware of that. Yeah, we're seeing yeah. some areas of patchy fog right now across the Treasure Valley. Also, some chilly temperatures too. We're hearing reports of some slippery ro slippery roads out there, so be careful out on your morning commute. But we are going to see some dry conditions today here in the valley. But over the next couple of days, we are going to see some precipitation as we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific right now. Multiple storms will enter our region. And the first of those set to arrive on Friday morning, and it's currently impacting western Washington right now. That'll drop down into our region as we head into Friday. Now, as for today, we're going to see some dry conditions with partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. We'll start to see that front roll into the early hours of Friday morning, and we'll likely see some snow showers move in from 2 a.m. till about 4 a.m. or till about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then after that, we should start to see those conditions clear out. We'll likely see some clear skies by Friday afternoon, but then we'll start to see some increasing clouds on Saturday ahead of a 
front that will bring us a period of snow on Saturday. High temperature is going to drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday and will likely drop down to the mid 30s on Sunday. Now by Monday, we'll see those highs dropping down right around freezing for, and we'll see some snow showers on Monday and on Wednesday. We'll likely see a wintry mix of rain and snow on Tuesday as those high temperatures jump back up into the upper 30s. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see some early, early morning snow showers on Friday. Those high temperatures going to be right around freezing both today and tomorrow before dropping down into the upper 20s on Saturday. That'll kick off some snow showers that'll continue through Wednesday and next week. Those high temperatures going to drop down to the mid 20s on Sunday and dropping down into the low 20s on both Monday and on Wednesday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly 4 degrees. Those lows should jump back up into the teens as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. And our high temperature on Tuesday going to be in the upper 20s over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasili. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take one last live look out there at 751 this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. Some congested traffic starts right after Garrity and continues on and off until you're over to five mile. Heavier around the Meridian Road interchange due to a heavy merge right now. And then on Meridian Road northbound. Heavy traffic starts before you get to Victory heading up to the freeway. And we have heavy traffic on Garrity after 39th. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And as you head out the door and hop in your car this morning, be sure to tune in to News Talk KBOI for some team traffic updates. You can find those on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on Fox 9 News, chaos at Target over this cup. Why this limited edition item is making waves. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 755 on your Thursday. Welcome news for air travelers. 2023 had the lowest flight cancellation rate over the last 10 years. That's according to the Transportation Department. DOT releasing data showing a 1.2% cancellation rate across more than 16 million flights. That's below the 10 year average of 1.7% and significantly down from 2.3% in 2022. Now holiday 22 travel was extremely frustrating for customers amid an airline meltdown that snowballed from winter storm disruptions. And that may be where the cancellation data stands out the most. Holiday travel from December 17th to January 1st saw a 0.8% cancellation rate this time around. Over that same period in 2022, it was 8.2%. The data showing 69% of cancellations in all of 2023, they were weather related. 19% were due to volume issues, while the remainder were a combination of runway, equipment, staffing, and other issues. Well, maybe you're not looking forward to the next holiday, Valentine's Day just a month away, but don't stress too much. Sweethearts has something special for those who are single this Valentine's Day. The Heart Shaped Candy Company releasing limited edition situationship boxes as the perfect gift for those not in a relationship during the Valentine's Day holiday. The boxes filled with hearts with blurry messages are what Sweethearts calls sweet muddled nothings and literal mixed messages they say to capture what singles are really dealing with. The special Valentine's Day treat is available for purchase on SweetheartsCandy.com beginning on Monday. Well, mayhem breaking out at Target over this limited edition cup. Target's new Valentine's Day Stanley collection, the Galentine's Day collection, already sold out. Several TikTok videos showing people rushing up to grab one. Target and Stanley collaborated to release the limited edition tumblers, which come in two different colors, Target Red and Cosmo Pink. According to Delish, they're already up for on resale sites like eBay, listed at prices up to two hundred and forty dollars. That's a pretty penny. Yeah, for a water bottle. <laughs> yeah. I have seen videos of people like running up to the shelves to grab them. It's, Insane. People really want them. I guess so. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching Fox 9 News. We'll see you again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Between now and then, have a great rest of your day.